Hi, everybody. Summer is upon us. And what do people like to do more in the summer than at any other time of the year? To exercise, to lose weight, or even just feel good about themselves. Maybe get that vitamin D that uh, gives them that little motivation to, uh, you know, stay up late. Um, any takers? What's that? That's right, running. Running is huge. I know there's the uh, Ottawa Marathon that people do in May. Then there's a Spartan race that we had just the other day in, in Ottawa as well. And coming up in September is the Army Run. So lots of exciting um, exercises, especially that has to do with uh, running uh, in Ottawa and nearby um, communities. And I'm sure everyone else has their favorite uh, race. There's even one in Niagara that's called the Chocolate Run. I've always wanted to go on that one. Seems like it's more eating than it is running, but uh, lots of good fun and lots of tasty treats. So today we want to talk about medial tibial stress syndrome, shin splints. I'm sure you've all heard about shin splints. There is two types of shin splints, and I'll show you a little bit of my foot here, right? So as we bring it down, right off the bone, here's your shin bone. Anterior shin splints is right to the outside part, and then posterior shin splints is on the inside part of the uh, bone on the back part of the, the shin. Now, usually these shin splints are caused by repetitive injury that is not allowed to heal properly. So you're not taking the proper recovery time so that the tissue can heal and not cause you as much pain. Most common in running and jumping activities as there are a lot of load that's being put onto the muscles of the calf and the shin. It's gonna be related to a lot of poor progressive training programs. So increase in distance, intensity, or even duration, right? Um, all these things contribute to having more load put on the tissue. And if it doesn't have the capacity to do work of that load, then it breaks down and has uh, pains or injuries. Running on hard surfaces or even uneven surfaces or bad running shoes. All that stuff uh, can contribute to having uh, shin splints in the long run. So be careful with what you're doing and make sure you're planning properly. And we'll go over some of the things that we can do to prevent uh, shin splints uh, and using the proper uh, attire. Anatomy. We're going to talk about anatomy because anatomy is pretty important to know where all this stuff comes from, what um, muscles are affected, uh, how we can, uh, you know, help out certain musculature that might be overloaded. So in the front part of the, the shin, we have our tibialis anterior, which is the major player there because it goes right off the bone and it often attaches to the bone, which is often where it's getting pulled and causing pain in that anterior shin splints causing right along the bone, pulling those the cells there, which uh, creates inflammation. Then we have our extensor digitorum longus, which is right beside the uh, tibialis anterior, and deep to that extensor hallucis longus. And they all help lift up the foot, lift up the toes um, when we're walking or doing actions uh, of daily living. Here's the back part of the posterior part of our shin, I mean, of our calf, and it's a gastroc soleus and Achilles. So the soleus and the gastroc go into the Achilles tendon where they attach to the heel bone, and that's the superficial. But more importantly, the deep posterior compartment. This is the tibialis uh, posterior. As you can see it right here is the tibialis posterior. Then we have uh, the flexor digitorum longus. Now both of these do attach to the bone, but the tibialis posterior actually has more influence on a posterior uh, shin splint uh, than the flexor, but that's also important. And then we have the flexor Halicus longus, which is a deep muscle too, that goes to the inside part of the ankle and does attach to the bottom of the foot. Now our lateral compartment, we have our fibularis longus and fibularis brevis. Now these act as one of the outside part of the strap that goes underneath the foot and attaches to the, usually the tibialis posterior and acts like a stirrup, like if you're riding a horse, give that stability into the foot. Now we talk about all these muscles, the front part, the back part, and the side part, because we need all these muscles to be strong so that they can convey all of the uh, forces going into these muscles equally. So we don't want to lift, you know, a 25 pound dumbbell. We want to lift a fit, uh, we want to lift a 10 pound dumbbell and distribute those forces evenly throughout all the muscles. Because if one muscle has to take on the whole load, a lot of times that's when they break down. That's when they cause injury and uh, basically stop you from doing the activities that you love. So make sure your anatomy is all clean and doing well. And you can get that with you no know, daily massages or some soft tissue work. Um, and stretching, obviously, as well. So let's talk about some of the causes of our uh, shin splints. 
because of shin splints. So pes planus, usually flat foot. That's what pes planus means. Okay. So when you have no arch and it's not supported, it pulls in those muscles even more. And then we have our pes cavus, which is a high arch, which distributes loads uh, usually to the front part or the back part of the heel, which can also create problems and can make some muscles overwork, causing shin splints. All right. The third uh, is a repetitive strain injury. So we'll get into that right now. So repetitive strain injury, RSI. There's a cascading effect of RSI. So as we look, we have our tissue trauma. So overloading that tissue or maybe even um, some type of uh, hit um, with, you know, uh, a bat or whatever, you knock into a, a bench that can also create that. Then we have the inflammation that's right below it. So inflammation from the tissue trauma, which causes muscle spasm. Most people are associated with muscle spasm with low back pain. So you can think about that, how you get all locked up and you can't move that well. And when you get all that muscle spasm, it closes down the blood vessels. So we have closed down blood vessels. We don't get enough oxygen, which creates an adhesion, which is something that doesn't need as much oxygen. So it's like a fibrous tissue. Now, when that happens, you get altered muscular control. So either from pain or from the adhesion, the body says, okay, I want to work certain muscles and some I don't want to work. So to save the body from losing energy or having pain. Then you get a muscle imbalance because you're always using the same muscles that the body is telling us to use and the other ones have become weaker and then you get uh, a bad forces in through the joint. So being pulled in different directions instead of being stabilized throughout the, the joint and using it um, wholly rather than using just parts of it. So you can have some cartilage damage or, or things like that as well. And that's where the cumulative cycle happens where it just happens over and over again until the injury gets worse, worse, worse until you unload it and stop that from happening. So the law of repetitive motion has a little bit of a, uh, an equation, okay? So we have I insult the tissue, all right, which is accumulated from the other um, factors. We have N, which is the number of repetitions. So the number of repetitions of whatever force that we're doing. So that would increase it a lot, all right? And then we have our uh, A, which is our amplitude and range of repetitions, and R, which is the rest interval uh, between repetitions. So if we increase the number of repetitions and force, uh, that can be pretty uh, hard on the tissue. Now, if we decrease the A, which is the amplitude and the range of repetitions, we get more repetition because it's a shorter, uh, think about a shorter stride, we have more repetitions rather than a longer stride, less repetitions, more rest between each one. And then we have uh, the interval of rest between so the tissue can recover. So when those are decreased, obviously we get more insult to the tissue. So as it says, as N and F increases and AR decreases, then I insult to tissue explodes. And last thing we want is exploding calves, right? We don't want to have our calves explode. That's not a good thing. On TV, things, things explode, fun. Having things in our bodies explode, like our Achilles tendon ruptures, not fun. So let's not have that happen. Pes planus, talked about that as being one of the causes, all right? Here's our flat foot, our pes planus, right? We have our tibialis posterior that comes in here, our flexor digitorum longus, and they're being tugged all the time because of the bad foot structure here, okay? So we don't wanna have bad foot structure because then these muscles pull a lot, pull on the bone, cause our periostitis, which is inflammation of the bone because these um, muscles are pulling uh, the bone off in little Sharpie fibers, okay? Treatment, what can we do for treatment to help this stuff out, okay? Let's help our shin splints with an ice massage, okay? We'll talk about that in the next pictures. Our inline technique, that is a, an acupuncture technique that we put along certain muscles, and we'll explain that. Gua sha and soft tissue work, that can be your active release technique or ART, as well as grass, which is the metal instruments. We have uh, the rock tools. Sometimes you can see ones that are uh, um, instrument-assisted adhesion release, soft tissue mobilization. They're all different names for um, these metal instruments, uh, and some are even made of urethane. Um, taping also can be very helpful for it simple taping, which is usually a temporary fix. Then we have bracing orthotics, which is more of a long-term structural fix. So as you saw the foot beforehand with the pes planus, that's a structural defect. You're never going to really regain your arch from, you know, just doing foot exercise from my experience. Uh, but the bracing orthotics are uh, basically like a chair. If you're sitting down, it's, it's that support system that can be very helpful if you want to do uh, things like running or uh, activities for a long time, standing, um, or just everyday activity that we have a bad structure on the in the foot. Ice massage, two to five minutes usually. Uh, you know, first of all, you start feeling it's cold, then it feels like it's, you know, tingling, then it goes numb. And after it goes numb, that's usually when we stop, okay? 
Um, we do that three times a day or so to really rate, put it right on the painful part. So usually it's right bef- beside the bone. This will really help decrease the inflammation as well as soothe some of the pain that's in there. Our inline technique for a posterior shin splint, we have it right on the uh, tibialis posterior. Flexor digitorum is kind of a little bit further back, but these can both be very uh, helpful at modulating the pain as well as in creating uh, endorphins and activating that muscle if it's not working properly. Here's your tibialis anterior, which is right off the front part of the bone, so our anterior shin splints, and it does the same mechanisms as um, the posterior shin splints inline technique as well, and that is acupuncture. Taping the ankle for support. You can see here it represents the tape going around each way. This is more used for like a, a ankle injury. So if you have a lot of that and you want to stabilize, so all the muscles basically are not firing, you're unloading uh, the ankle and those muscles. You can do a taping like this. It kind of goes into kind of a, a stirrup fashion. As you can see here, it goes underneath and this one comes underneath this way as well. So it acts in a stirrup. Uh, the tibial is posterior and usually the fibula is long as they do this, which helps support the foot. Uh, like we said, when you're riding like a horse stirrup, same uh, type of principles. They can also act like proprioception uh, feedback, which is where your body feels it in space. Giving a little tap, it can feel a little bit more. It helps with balance um, and coordination and stability. So proprioception is very important uh, for balance. Um, and there's a balance uh, um, presentation that I think most of you have endured with me as well. Uh, and that is also on YouTube if you want to see that. Now, Pez plan is for support taping. So this is a little bit of a support taping. It's really simple. It's a one strip. It goes underneath the uh, arch there. So almost in the middle of the arch and it comes and wraps around the outside part of the shin here. Here's your heel and your toes are here and it's a rigid tape. It is not a kinesio tape because kinesio tape usually gives too much. It doesn't give the support you need. This is a, a, an athletic rigid tape. Uh, usually we, it's a Luqua tape that we get, but you can find other no name brands that can be very effective as well. And that's for your flat foot. Okay, for Pez Cavus, which is a high arch, you want to create some pronation. So you're wrapping from the bottom of the kind of the fifth toe here uh, underneath, and you're bringing it across to help raise up that to put a little bit more, uh, sorry about that, put a little bit more, uh, more flattening of the arch in through here. Okay. Now here's your biomechanical adjustments that you can do from home just to think about. So change your running shoes right? Every 250 to 400 miles. That will really help out uh, with keeping good support, good cushioning, and that your shoes aren't wearing out and you're getting those types of uh, uh, over uh, use uh, stress on those muscles that we talked about. All right. Custom orthotics, really good for those people that have that structural problem. We saw that in the picture with the Pez Planus, uh, the flat foot. Those can be very helpful and they're custom made to your foot. So they're made to help with all your foot mechanical problems. They should feel very comfortable. They shouldn't be, you know, putting pressure on uh, only one spot. They should be pretty smooth through the, the tissue is actually putting all the forces throughout the foot and not just on certain parts and then gradually increasing the load. Now the running room does a great job. It's called learn to run. They start progressing you uh, properly for whatever race you're doing. If you're doing a half marathon, a 10 K full marathon, whatever it is so that you can progress properly without injury uh, and actually making it fun. A lot of people are doing it. You're doing small increments and then you're working your way up and they really know how to do this. They've been doing it for years and they're really great about it. So invest in your running room and uh, share the enjoyment of running and, and taking on your first marathon with them as well. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me, which uh, Proact Sports Injury Clinic, uh, 308 Palladium Drive in Canada. We're at 613-505-5000. And we're Proaction Sports Clinic at gmail.com. If you want to email me, I would love to hear your, your questions. Um, and hopefully I will talk to you soon. Stay away from all those shin splints and uh, run, perform, be healthy. Take care. Have a good one.